All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Family Resources. We are really excited to get to be able to present on some information that will help you acclimate to your transition to UNC Charlotte, because we always speak about the student transition. But to be realistic, families have a transition as well, whether your student is an incoming first year or an incoming transfer. It's really important for us to be able to recognize that families have a transition as well. And we want to make sure that you feel like you are part of the Niner Nation community as well. Um, so today's presentation is going to give you some resources that are specifically for family members. And then at the end, we'll leave some time for questions and answers um, that you may have that may be um, questions that you've been wanting to ask and we are your people to ask. So at any point, if you do have a question, you can utilize the bottom of the screen. Um, there's a Q&A button. You can um, put your questions in there and we will answer them at the end. Um, do not use the chat function because we have um, stopped use of that um, because we won't be able to see your chat. We also cannot hear and see you. Um, so you're just able to hear and see us. You'll be able to see the pre presentation that we have as well. Um, so just know that, but please utilize the Q&A function at the bottom of the screen and we will answer those at the end. But we will go ahead and get started. Okay, we're just pulling up our presentation. So you have something to follow along with as well. You good, Daniel? There we go. All right, so this is Family Resources and we'll introduce ourselves in just a minute. Um, there is time for that, but thank you for coming to the Family Resources presentation. All right, so on today's agenda, we're going to talk about a few different things. You're going to meet the team, um, and these are our panelists as well. We're going to talk a little bit about our mission, um, some organizations that you can be a part of, publications, events, and then the family SOAR component. So to meet the team, hi, my name is Nassim Nozertosh. I'm one of the assistant directors of New Student and Family Services, and I primarily work with family programs. So if you get emails from our office, it is probably from me. Um, we do a lot of different family initiatives, and you're gonna hear about that today in this presentation. And I hope to be able to connect with each of you later on. Hello, I'm Anna. I'm one of the family program's interns. I am a second year student and I'm studying English and then I'm also having minors in Spanish and secondary education. And I also primarily work with families. Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Mabu and I'm a third year psychology major, public health minor, and I'm also one of the family program's interns for the new student family services office. All right, so the mission of new, uh, new Student and Family Services for the family program side is to make sure that families are informed and engaged. Um, it's really important, like I said, to understand that there is a transition that goes on for family members as well, and we wanna make sure that we are here to help guide you through your transition as well as your student's transition. So we do kind of a two for one special as I like to call it. Um, we believe it is important that y'all have a successful transition because if you do, then your students do as well. It does impact the student journey um, at UNC Charlotte. So we wanna make sure that we connect you to the Charlotte community as well as the university. And we do that through a multitude of ways and we will go through that throughout the presentation. So one way that we do this is through Niner Nation Family Association. Um, I like to call this like the PTA that happened in high school. So if anyone was a part of some version of PTA, this is it. Um, so Niner Nation Family Association, otherwise known as NNFA, um, is an organization that family members can join for a fee. It is either a one year fee, a one year for $49 or four years for 149. I don't know if you noticed, but the 49 theme kind of happens um, in the pricing as well. 
Um, but it is an opportunity for you to get engaged with a smaller group of family members. Um, so we will have events for NNFA. We have certain publications to keep them um, involved and engaged. And we have um, certain resources that are specifically for NNFA. It is uh, important for us to be able to communicate with our families, and this is just one way we do it. So if you do want to be a part of the NNFA membership, or if you just want to learn more information about it, um, if you visit our website, nsfs.uncc.edu, and then click the Families tab, you'll be able to see more information about this organization. Um, but this is just one way that we have for family members to get involved that really doesn't involve their student. It's the family organization is how we like to do it. This has nothing to do with your students. This is solely about families. All right, so another way that families can get involved is through family council. Now, this is the version I like to say, it's like the board of the PTA. Um, so family council is another opportunity for families to get engaged with the Charlotte community. And they'll have the opportunity to help in certain specific ways. So they allocate the 49er family fund grant and scholarships. So they help um, give out those um, grants to students um, through scholarships. Um, they, this family council makes a thousand dollar donation um, to be able to be in the council, but all that goes back to the students in the university. They also help provide the family perspective um, to university leadership. So there has been uh, times that the family council has met the chancellor, um, Chancellor Dubois, um, who is um, leaving uh, within the next month, I believe, um, and then um, bringing in our new chancellor, Chancellor Gaber, we'll have the opportunity to talk to um, their council, their leadership staff. Um, so they've had opportunities through uh, family weekend, um, through one semester meetings, um, they get engaged and that stays consistent throughout the year. Um, so it's important to understand that family council has a perspective that they're able to give and they do provide that to university leadership. And more information on that is on our website. Okay, so on to publications, which is honestly the main job for the FAM turns. Um, we, for NNFA members, we have a monthly newsletter, um, two magazines per year, and then also a yearly calendar. Um, these publications are honestly like my baby, and they just, um, Honestly, like for real, I love these publications so much um, and just being able to provide as much helpful information to families as possible is really important to me to help with this transition. And onto the next slide, we have like some pictures and stuff so you can see what to expect. So family news goes out to all families um, and that's once per semester. And then we also have relatively speaking, which is going to go out monthly just to NNFA members. So um, they're pretty similar in content. Just if you are a NNFA member, you get more um, newsletters and um, kind of get to see more of the month-to-month -month basis of what's going on on campus. And then our magazine, um, we come out with a magazine once per semester, especially this past one that we made was really fun to make. I kind of felt like I was on like some kind of team to make a Vogue magazine. It was really cool to start from the beginning and just work your way to the final product. And it's really great to be able to partner with other organizations and offices on campus and give firsthand information to families um, to just really help with this transition for students and um, give an overview of campus life. And then we have pictures of the magazine. So this was our magazine that we created this spring. The theme for it was Traditions and Transitions. So we highlighted some key traditions of UNC Charlotte. And then we also had a chance to interview the head football coach, Coach Healy, which was a really awesome opportunity and just another reason that these magazines are really cool. And then we also have our yearly calendar, which will go out to all NNFA members. And this was my actual baby that I started working on in, I think, November and worked on it all the way through May, I think was the final um, 
draft of it and it's really cool. We include a lot of beautiful pictures of campus so even for the family members who aren't nearby can see all the really awesome spots and favorite places on campus. Inside the magazine we have some tips for 49ers that highlight resources like apps that students can download to help them out, mm -hmm. um, offices on campus, and we also just kind of highlight the key events that happen for each month. So yeah, so here's some pictures of the calendar. And then Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think Jake like is having some audio issues, but I can, I can jump in. Yeah. Can you speak one more time, Daniel? Can't hear you really well. Okay, we'll figure that out. Don't worry about it. Um, I'll jump in, Anna, you jump in too, if uh, at any point. So family resources, part of it is that we offer different events through our specific office. So these are family events that are through New Student and Family Services. Um, there are different events that uh, are offered that are not a part of our office, such as like homecoming. I know a lot of families come to that. There's um, tailgates as well. That's usually not through our office, um, except for family weekend. Um, so these are specific to new student and family services. Um, so one of the events that we do is new family reception. A new family reception happens at the beginning of the fall semester. Um, this is when families will be able to get together. It's usually during move-in. Um, we want to get you out of the hot heat of the summer that is blazing during the August, September months. Um, and this is a time for families to be able to come in, get snacks, uh, get a drink, and be able to meet um, UNC Charlotte, student affairs staff, as well as celebrate kind of a fun, successful move-in. Um, this year we're seeing um, what restrictions we have just to be transparent and we will let you know how new family reception happens. Um, whether it is through a virtual environment or through a non-virtual environment, we will still host it and figure out the best way to do this. Um, but we wanna make sure that we just get some guidance on that and just wanted to be a little bit transparent about it, but it is a, a event that we're excited to um, host. All right, family weekend. Anna, do you wanna do this? Yeah, sure. So Family Weekend is definitely one of our biggest events that we get a lot of attendance for. It's a lot of fun. You get to go to the football game and there's a tailgate. It's really fun. A lot of good food. Last year we had um, open bar and that was really nice. And yeah, it's just a lot of fun. There's a lot of events. There's 411 sessions. So you can know more about UNC Charlotte and what's going on on campus and just connect with your student, come back to campus, join the community for a weekend. And this year, um, Family Weekend is October 16th through the 18th. So mark your calendars um, that is set um, already, and we are working on planning Family Weekend as well. Um, 16th and 17th are primarily the days where it's a lot of programming. The 18th has a little bit less. So if you need to figure out travel plans, do so. But come early on the 16th, and then the 18th is busy with programming as well. So mark those days, October 16th through the 18th. It's right after... Um, I know it's right before homecoming, I believe this year, not sure, um, but 16 through 18. Okay, and then Spring Family Reunion next is essentially the spring version of Family Weekend. Uh, we have not had a spring family reunion for the last two years, but we are working on something great for this upcoming year. And um, there's going to be a lot of fun programming and stuff. And a lot of events to come. I'm really excited to start working on planning this um, and it's just going to be a great time for families again to just come back and connect with their students. All right, so virtually virtual family sort. Um, it is important to understand that Families do have a SOAR version component. While it is not a live session, it is a um, online website where we've created content that you can go and look through. So Virtual Family SOAR is free for all incoming families. There's no fee associated with it. 
Um, the website is virtualsoar.uncc.edu and we will send that out. Um, for first time users, you will have to create an account. Um, so please use your Gmail or any sort of email that you have. We're a Gmail campus, so we're used to that. Um, there are six interactive modules that go through different parts of UNC Charlotte, whether it is about social, whether it's about community, whether it's about academics, you can read through the different colleges as well. Um, so there is that component um, in there. So six sections to go through. You can go through it at your own pace so you can go back at it. Um, there are also some quizzes and videos in there just to kind of test your knowledge and um, videos you'll see some familiar faces such as Anna, Daniel, and I. And um, we help with the resources that families have. So a lot of information we're giving in this um, presentation you will also get um, in the virtual family SOAR. So that is one component that um, you will have for SOAR. It is not live, but it is free. Um, your students do have a live session. Whoever is an incoming student, um, they do have a live session that they go to. It is two separate um, programs. Sorry, okay, Fan Fridays is something that Daniel and I have worked on for this summer to help incorporate you as families. Um, because we don't have that live version of SOAR for you, we can kind of give an extra something to help you get all the information you need, especially on some more specific topics from a student's perspective or from a specific office. So Fan Fridays is essentially an interactive interview that Daniel and I do with another office or organization on campus um, to just give them the most frequently asked questions so you have all of the questions for that topic in one short video. Um, today we actually posted our first episode on welcome programs also known as Gold Rush so you should follow us on Instagram at UNCC NSFS and then we also have it on Facebook and on our New Student Family Services YouTube page and yeah it's really exciting we're gonna be posting them every friday until the end of soar okay family forum is um another question and answer kind of situation where you can join as a family member and i think this is every other friday is that right nasim Okay, so every other Friday we will host Family Forum and it'll be Daniel and I and Nassim and then three OCs that will help to answer any of your questions on any topic as far as transitioning with your student to UNC Charlotte. And it will be in a similar format to this in a webinar format where you'll be able to see us. And we will not be able to see or hear you, but you'll have the little Q&A feature at the bottom and we will answer your questions as they come in. All right, and other helpful resources there are these three different apps that we have. We have the Live Safe app, the Cats app, and the Niner Destination app. Live Safe is a app that we encourage also your students. We actually all three. We encourage all uh, all of them um, for your students to get them. The Live Safe app is. Um, as our safety app. Our police are connected to it for UNC Charlotte and it's a really great app to be able to see if like your students want um, uh, to send a message to family saying like, hey, I'm going to um, be leaving this place and then going to this place, the family member can kind of follow along with them um, if they feel like they are unsafe or they just wanted an extra assurance. So there is that opportunity. So Live Safe is a really great app that you should utilize and download as well, um, both family members and students. The CATS app is for the light rail. Um, so we do have the luxury of having a light rail on, uh, right on campus. It connects to campus, goes all the way to uptown, goes to different parts of Charlotte. Um, it's a really great um, utilization for um, transportation. And the CATS app really helps to see the different times as, um, that the light rail um, comes to campus and leaves. And then the Niner Destination app is really a app for your SOAR experience. Um, so all your virtual SOAR experience. So um, a lot of our virtual bag information, all of our OCs, all that information is in there. So if you need some extra resources for Niner Destination, it is all in there. Also has some Gold Rush information or we'll be posting Gold Rush, which is our welcome events for, um, that will happen for the first 10 days of um, uh, coming back to campus in fall. So make sure you get those apps. And then to connect with us, we have different uh, resources. We have Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Our um, uh, 
media platforms that we're really utilizing right now is uh, Facebook and Instagram. We're working on our Twitter, um, so bear with us, but those are the different handles. So UNC Charlotte, New Student Family Services for Facebook, and then at UNCC NSFS for Instagram. And that's where you can find Fam Fridays, um, on both on Facebook and on Instagram. And we have closed captioning on our YouTube website, which our Facebook can lead you to. And then lastly, to contact us, we have our website, which is nsfs.uncc.edu. You can go ahead and go to that website and then click the families tab and you will be um, directed to all the family resources that we spoke about. Our address, our phone number, and our email address are down there as well, parents at uncc.edu. Um, so if you have any questions, please go ahead and utilize that email address if we do not know the answer or um, if we need to direct you to a different office, that's what we will do. We will make sure to help all of our families have a great transition um, to UNC Charlotte. Um, so please utilize our office. We are here for you. We are currently not in the space. I don't know if as you can tell. Um, we are currently not in the building, um, but we are using our phone numbers and email addresses as well um, to be able to help answer any questions that families and students may have. All right. Thank you. We can't wait to work with you and we're going to open it up to some questions. So if you have any questions, go ahead and put it in the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Right. Okay, so the first question we have is when is move in date and that is actually for on campus students who are living on campus, they are allowing move-in to last for seven days this year to ensure social distancing, social distancing protocols can be taken. I think the first day that they're starting it is August 31st, and it's gonna go through the next seven days after that. Um, you will have to sign up for a specific day and time to move in, and you will get more, your student will get more information on that in their email through Housing and Residence Life. Thanks, Jane. Very thorough. We appreciate it. All right, what other questions do y'all have? Go ahead and put them in the Q&A. Um, we'd be happy to answer them. Um, but a question that um, a lot of families, oh. So when we, uh, may they visit the campus, will they have access to all the buildings? That's a really good question. Um, so um, when you enter campus, you'll be able to, in the fall semester during move-in, you'll be able to visit the different buildings. Um, I'm not sure if they will have restrictions right now. They haven't talked about any of those, so we'll definitely have to wait on guidance. Um, but uh, admissions is giving a virtual tour um, during webinars. So um, like this webinar on Fridays, um, they have a virtual tour. I believe it's at noon each Friday. So if you go to the nsfs.uncc edu website and then go to the um, student tab to see the SOAR webinar series, you will be able to see that admissions has a virtual tour every Friday at noon. So that's your best bet right now. But you will be able to have access to the different buildings when you go back to campus unless there are restrictions. Um, but usually they are open um, around um, when students are back and students are able to go into the different buildings, especially the more popular ones like the student union, the dining halls, um, the different uh, academic buildings, which I highly encourage um, for any classes that you may have to be able to walk um, through those um, buildings to see where your classes are located prior. But I recommend the admissions virtual tour for now. Is the hotel completed that is being built on campus? It's not completed yet. I actually drove past it um, a couple days ago. It's not completed, but it's getting there. It's a lot um, bigger. I I'm not sure the name of it, and I forget which what the brand is. Um, so it's still being um, completed. I believe in the next, I want to say, year, year and a half. I'm not sure with the construction that it, if that created any sort of um, delay. Um, but it is still being built. It's not completed at all. Good question though. I wanna know. I would love to know. All 
All right, a popular question that we get from family members, um, especially for incoming family members, is about dining um, options. So can Anna and Daniel, you talk about the different dining that is available for students? I'm not sure if Daniel's mic is working yet or not, but um, so I know for this year, the only dining option they're offering for first year students that live on campus is the unlimited plan. So they will have unlimited meal swipes to go to the dining halls, which would be Sovi in South Village or Crown Commons in the Union. Um, so they will be completely unlimited breakfast, lunch and dinner. They can go as many times as they want. And then I think they can bring up to four guests with them if they do go to the dining hall. So like if you go and visit your student, you can eat in the dining halls with them. And then they also get $300 of DB, which is just declining balance. There's a lot of chains on campus. So we have Chick-fil-A, we have Bojangles, Wendy's, Salsaritas, Panda Express, all kinds of places. Um, and they'll have three $300 included in their meal plan to eat at those places and they can also pay with like credit card cash anything like that as well at those places and I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to add on dining I don't think so <laughs> Anna has a really good experience because she uh, used to live on campus speaking of which can you talk about your experience living on campus in a residence hall yeah, so um, I was a first year student last year and I was in a learning community. So I had the luxury of living with other people in my learning community, but I also had a roommate that was not part of the learning community. Um, everyone that I lived with was a like random to a certain extent besides the people who were in my learning community, but I did not know them or like really communicate with them before school started. And even though it can be kind of risky to have random roommates assigned, it was definitely a good experience to just experience living with different people. I personally lived in a four person, four bedroom suite. So I lived in Lynch Hall, um, which is a freshman only building, which is really nice about it. And we had, everyone had their own bedroom and then we shared a living space with a couch and a TV stand and we shared a bathroom. And yeah, so that was my experience. There's also apartments on campus. I know Daniel has lived on a, in an on-campus apartment, and those are really nice. I think most of them are also four-person, four-bedroom. There are also suites where you have the shared living space and bathroom, but it's four people and two bedrooms, so you share a bedroom with one person, and then we also have the traditional style residence halls um, where you have communal bathrooms per your hall or per, like, however many rooms, and then you share your room with one other person. But living on campus is very convenient as far as like if you find a parking space like you're good to go. You don't really have to leave campus again because where you live is on campus. You could just walk to and from and you can wake up like 30 minutes before your class starts and you have plenty of time to get up, get ready, and make it to class on time. This is a testimonial from a student um, right here in the day. Um, this is a question for you. Is there a separate swipe card available for incidentals such as laundry or copying like your um, papers, printing, stuff like that? Yeah, so laundry, at least in my building, and I'm pretty sure this is every building in UNC Charlotte, laundry, there's no charge for it. You do have to, you have like big communal laundry rooms. Some of the apartments on campus do have their own washer and dryer within the apartment, um, but a lot of the places on campus, it's like per floor, there's one big laundry room. So mine in Lynch had four washing machines and six washer or six dryers. And um, it was just first come first serve. You do not have to pay to use them. You do have to get your own detergent, dryer sheets and things like that. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's like that in every residence hall. I don't know of anyone who was ever charged to use the laundry rooms. And then what was the second half of that question? I'm sorry. You're good for printing, like for um, printing papers or copying papers. Yeah, so in Atkins Library, there are printers there. I did not use them. I had my own printer, but I think there is a charge for it, but you can charge it like to your UNC Charlotte account. I don't know. Daniel, have you ever used the printers in Atkins Library? No. I think, it, yeah, um, it's all, there's not like a separate card for it though. 
Yeah. It's, it's, not all like a card. it's all within one. Yeah. Within your ID. Good question. All right. Do you have any other questions? Y'all been great. Well, if you do have any other questions, we, um, you are more than welcome to utilize our email at parents at uncc.edu. One of us will answer, utilize our website. It has a lot of resources. Look at the social media. We have been really proud of being able to utilize those resources. Daniel, Daniel and Anna have created a Fan Friday that is out right now on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram. Um, it talks about the transitions and welcome programs that we have, and each week they will post one on Friday. Um, so make sure that you tune into those. They're really great, helpful tips, and they're not that long. They're less than 10 minutes, um, so please watch those videos. They will help hopefully answer some questions that you may have or haven't thought of yet. But we do have a lot of resources for you and we hope you utilize them. But since we have no more questions, we'll go ahead and leave it off. Um, thank you for tuning in. We appreciate it. And we hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye everyone.